What is up guys, Fahir here from AwesomeDudes.com and I have a huge announcement for you. In my most popular course, you will learn how to create RPG and first person shooter multiplayer games. And you can get that course at a huge discount. And this is not the best part. The best part is that I have created a special coupon code and when you use it to enroll in the course, you will automatically be enrolled in my giveaway competition and you will get a chance to win some cool prizes. What are those prizes? Well, first place is gonna get a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place is gonna get an iMac 27 inch with Retina 5K display. And third place is gonna get a 13 inch MacBook Pro. All you have to do to enroll in this competition is enroll in the course and link to it is in the description below. You will also find another link to the video where I explain about the giveaway competition in more depth. In short, I will record myself drawing the winners and sending them their prices depending on which places they are or they win first, second or third. So we'll see me sending these MacBook Pros and you will see me announcing the winners and I will post that on my YouTube channel. So again, first prize will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second prize is 27 inch iMac with 5K Retina display. And third place is 13 inch MacBook Pro. What is up guys, Fahir here from AwesomeDudes.com. In the previous video, we have created our main menu and animated it. So now let's go into our gameplay scene. So what we need to do is first click on file and then new scene. Shortcut for that is command N on Mac, control plus N on Windows. So if I click new scene, it's gonna take me right here and I'm gonna hold command press S to save it. So assets, scenes, this one is gonna be named gameplay. The first thing that I wanna do is set up our gameplay scene. Yes, again, we're gonna set up things. Still, we're not gonna code, so uh, deal with it, I don't care. Anyways, I'm gonna right click here in the hierarchy panel, go under UI and create an image. This is gonna be our background. It comes with a canvas right away, so I'm gonna rename it to UI canvas. Change it from screen space overlay to screen space camera and attach the main camera right here. Take the image and I'm gonna set it at 0, 0, 0, but before or after I do that, we are gonna set the UI scale mode to scale with screen size 480 by 800 and we are gonna match width and height equally. Now what we need to do is we need to add a background to our well, image. And that is gonna be under backgrounds and buttons, the sky image. So let me take it right here, rename it to background instead of image, drag and drop the sky image right here where the sprite is and click on set native size. Now you see the image is not how we wanted it to be because of that. I'm simply gonna set it at 480 by 800 for the width and the height. And voila, here is our image. I'm also gonna change the color. Now we have this purple white color. I don't want that. So for the color in the image property, we have the color hex color right here is gonna be at 76 F9. So 76 F9 F F F. This is the color that we want. So let me just go here in the game. Yeah, this is exactly the color that we want to have. Now, what we are gonna do is create another image by duplicating the background image. So simply duplicate it. And these are gonna be our back trees like this. And for that, we need to search well for our tree one image. So I'm simply gonna put it right here instead of the sky. Now, this is not how we want them to be. So I'm gonna change the width to 560 and the height to 450. And the position, I'm gonna say here for the Y, negative 212 and voila. These are our background, well, background trees. Of course, since we have duplicated this background, we have changed the color. So I'm gonna put the color back to white or the normal color. So now they are green as any normal trees well, are. We are also 
gonna take other trees which are our front trees so let me just take them right here and place them well something like this now these are gonna be our front trees because they are in front of these trees and this one let me just name them front tree one I'm gonna set it here so let me say 0.5 for the X 0.6 for the Y that is the scale of it and notice please notice this is not a UI element so this is a simple game object. I have simply dragged and dropped these trees right here in the scene folder or actually in the scene view. So I did not create a UI element for them. As you can see, we have the background and we have the trees. If I turn off the canvas, we are left with the front trees. So don't be confused. They are not a UI element. They are a simple game object. Now here I'm going to set it at negative 3 point, let's say 3 and for the Y I'm going to say negative 3.5. So this is where I'm going to place this tree and for our other trees I'm simply going to duplicate these and this is going to be our front tree. Let me duplicate it again. So this is going to be our front tree 2. Now this one is going to be positioned at 3. So negative 3 or actually positive 3. And for the Y, I'm going to say 3.9. So these are the trees that are going to be in our game, which gives that depth effect for our game. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add our bounds. And for that, we have the bounds right here. So they are, let me just find them right here at shield, side boundaries. Here they are. So these are the bounds that we want to add in our game. Now we are going to have, we're going to duplicate these, but before we do that, I'm going to change their scale to be 0.76 on the X. I'm not going to touch anything on the Y and I'm going to set 0, 0, 0 for, well, the X and the Y position. So this is our level. This right here that you see is our level. What we need to do now is we need to add two box colliders to them. Why two? Well, because I don't want to, I'm not going to slice these if I open these, as you can see, these are two separate boundaries. So one is here and another is here. I'm not going to use the slice machine or the slice sprite editor right here to slice it like this. So one is here and another is here. I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to use them as they are, but I need to add two box colliders on them because we don't want or we want to prevent collision from our player going outside of these. So if I take the side boundaries, we are going to add one box collider and we are going to add another box collider. Really, really, really important thing to know. When you are working in a 2D project, so you're working with a 2D game, when you filter for a box collider, so you have a box collider here and you have a box collider 2D. Box collider is for 3D game objects, so be very, very careful about that. Box collider 2D is for 2D. So you need to be careful about it because if you add a box collider, this one, the 3D one, your code will not work because we are working with 2D. So what we're going to do with the first box collider, well, offset is going to be at four, actually here, offset is going to be 4.29. We're not going to touch offset Y. Size X is going to be 1.61. And the size Y is going to be 1024. And if I take all of these game objects and deactivate and we will see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take the other box collider, which is this one right here. And for this one, we are going to say, well, the offset is going to be at negative. So this one's going to be negative 4.29. Offset Y, we're not going to touch it. Size is going to be 1.61, so 1.61, and we're not going to touch, well, the other size for the Y. As you can see here, we have two box colliders. Let me just take this right here and position it here so you can see it. One box collider is here, and if I move it, let me just move one of these, okay? I'm moving this one on the left side. You see, I'm moving it. Let me just remember or memorize the value. So I'm moving it. This is one of the box colliders. You see it? The green thing right here. This is for the left one. And this one right here, the other one, this right here is for the, well, right one. So we have two of these that are going to represent boundaries on our two, let's say, call these pipes. I'm going to call them pipes. And I don't care if they are, if they are not actually pipes. I'm going to call them pipes. 
Don't you come with me, okay? Technically, they are not pipes, they are this, I don't care, okay? So, we need three more of these, so one, and this one is gonna be positioned at 10 for the Y, two, this one's gonna be positioned at 20 for the Y, and three, and this one is gonna be positioned at 30 for, well, well, on the Y. So this is what we have. These are the boundaries, and since I am a control freak or organization freak, I'm gonna right click here, create an empty game object, and I'm gonna name this one player bounds like this, position this at zero, zero, zero. Now, when I say position this empty game object at zero, 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 that does not mean anything. I just like them to be positioned like that. I don't want this to be at 200 here and 351. No, I want them at zero, zero, zero. Select all four of our bounds. So we have side boundaries, one, two, and three. Drag and drop them under the player bounds, which is our parent game object. And voila, this is what we have. This is our official level and we are done with editing it. The next thing that we need to do is actually make these bounds move. You see, we need to make them move like this in order to simulate an infinite background effect. And we will start doing that from the next video. So, uh, Fahir here from awesometoots.com. Catch you guys in the next video. Before we end this video, don't forget that you can enroll in my most popular course, Create Your First RPG and First Person Shooter Multiplayer Game in Unity. Link is in the description below. And when you enroll in the course, you will also enroll in my giveaway competition and get a chance to win one of my cool prizes. First place will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place will win iMac 27 inch with 5K Retina display. And third place will win a MacBook Pro 13 inch laptop. Now, all you have to do to enroll in the giveaway and get a chance to win one of these cool computers is enroll in the course. Again, link is in the description below.